All right guys, we're back in the shop. Today we are gonna be getting new airbags, shocks. Gonna try to service the engine. We may or may not get that done today, depending on how fast the rear of the truck goes. But we're gonna get some maintenance done and we're gonna go over what all we just got picked up in the, from the shop today. So to start off everything, we've got four brand new airbags. There's only two right there, but there's more up there on the table. We got four brand new shocks for the rear of the truck. We've also got two brand new airbags up here also. We've got a, ooh, pull that air filter. I'll see if that's the right one. Looks like it. Yeah, baby. That's it. Looks a lot cleaner too, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> we got a brand new air compressor for it, two new oil filters, new fuel filters, and new shocks for the front of the truck. So we got everything here to basically service the entire engine. And today's video is going to be sponsored by Hot Shot Secret, guys. They have brought us everything we're going to be using today for our gear oil for the rear axles. We may or may not get that put in today, but we're definitely going to, and we're going to be changing the coolant oil and all that good stuff out on future videos. So, but today we are gonna be changing the oil and we've got some sick new um, lubes and stuff like that we're gonna be using to get some of the hardware undone because some of it is corroded. So the first product I'm up on Hot Shot Secret we're gonna be using today is some lube and we're basically gonna be spraying this on, even though we've already painted over all these threads on everything, we're gonna be spraying it all over all these bolts to get them loose. Um, Lake's over here unbolting the airlines from the top of the airbags. I'm gonna get down here on the bottom and get this bottom bolt. We'll hit it right there with a little bit of lube. I'm gonna hit every bolt on here. We're gonna be taking loose for all the shock hardware and everything because we're gonna be reusing all this hardware and we don't want any of it to tear up or get damaged from having um, no lubricant on any of these threads to have any issues. So I'm gonna coat them all. Then we're gonna get some of these airbags unbolted and get some new stuff put in here. So I know a lot of you may have your thoughts and opinions about using the plastic lower shells on these bags. We're not gonna be doing any crazy, super heavy hauling like a lot of uh, you guys do that do over the road driving. So um, I got the nuts busted loose here. And well, that's pretty easy. Um, Lake, we're gonna have to unscrew these right here very carefully. And um, we'll get those put on the new bags. And then we need to get, grab a, we're actually grab a wire brush and we'll clean that up real quick. Yeah, that's it. They come right off. They collapse onto themselves, I guess. That was easy. Boom. Airbags out. I'll oh, we'll put the other two new ones in here. And uh, while he's cleaning that, I'm going to get the shocks busted loose. So we got all these old sheety bags off. These things are in just like garbage shape, guys. I'm so glad we're changing them out. Believe it or not. And we've got some Monroe Magnums, baby. Some Magnum Monroe gas shocks. Skirt. Put these mothers open. Um, I got one put on the other side, one bag put on just to kind of test fit stuff. But if you guys look at the top of the shock of the old ones, they're the same. But if you look at the bottom, they is different. So we had to cut the right side of the shock down that that bar there and i ran out of uh bandsaw blades so i had to send lake to town to grab some but we got one side done with a monroe magnum one new airbag on there so now we're gonna work on doing the front and austin's getting the stuff painted up from where we pulled the bags and all that good stuff off and the shocks off and they all look pretty again in other news i thought that the front king pins were back is the way the axles moving back and forward but maybe the front leaf spring bushings, don't know yet. Um, so we got new shocks going on the front also, so maybe that'll take care of our problem. Actually, I can go put those on, I didn't think about that. Um, our new wheels will be here from Buy Truck Wheels Friday. I ordered brand new Hercules tires, and we all go all the way around. Some Not the same aggressive tires like we're on the back, but they're kind of like semi-aggressive. You guys just have to see, they'll be here tomorrow, so be tuning in. So I got the front shock pulled off. You can see how fast that thing compresses. Valving it should be more to slap out. Um, and it's going to be a perfect chance to use some hot shot spray and stay grease. So we're going to hit up these uh, spots on the front here where the shot goes on. And uh, shut this new shot. Just like that. Oh, we need some cutter pliers, sir. Shot. Most installed. Where's my new 
one and done. Now I'll go to the other side. The so while we're waiting on Lake to get back from the store, I guess we'll go ahead and do the air filter. This big bastard here. That's like $100. It's crazy. Everything for this truck is so expensive. So it kind of sits up in there and the air intake there hugs it. It just chills up there like that. So, well, yeah, we'll figure this out. So that needs to go right there. I think one of the clamps fell somewhere, so I gotta find that. This goes in That's it. So while I was in town, I went ahead and picked up a couple of drain cans. We used to drain one. Ooh. That's diesel, but it's black. That's nasty. I've never seen black diesel before. Interesting. Ooh, it's a head. Hmm. You know, I bet they were pouring like a little bit of motor oil here and there in these diesel <clears> tanks or something. Probably. It's got Detroit fuel filters on it, so that's cool. Filters check. So while we're waiting on Lake to get back with the bandsaw, I'm gonna go ahead and grease up this whole truck. We're gonna start at the rear of it and work my way forward. If you guys remember, it was already pretty well greased up by the grease that slung everywhere on the truck, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit her again with a bunch of grease, so I'm gonna get to it. So also went ahead and got the oil changed. We've got brand new Wix oil filters right here, which are basically the same as Napa and just as good. Uh, we're going to go here to our Hot Shot Secret Shelf. We've got a whole piss load of 15W40 
their dynamic fleet with FR3 nanotechnology, which we're gonna be putting in our new to us Detroit engine. So we're gonna go to get the oil filters off of it. We're gonna pre-fill the new filters with some oil and get this baby filled up to the top. Ooh, that's heavy. There's one, very full, very, very full of oil. They're probably filled up that freaking this little thing we got going on here. Yeah, probably. I think it's a lot. Dang, that's a lot. If you guys have any questions about Hot Shot Secret or any of the products they offer that you've seen in today's video, then you can go to their website. I'll have a link in the description below and probably a discount the code down there for you guys. Go check it out. Let's try not to make a mess or contaminate in town. Probably a happy motor now. This oil probably been in here for. He said he hasn't really used it for like two or three years at least. So some clean oil, some clean fuel going in it. And oh, it looked rough when I drained it. The oil? Yeah. Oh, yeah all this diesel oil always looks bad. Well, now time to fill her on up, fellers and ladies. There's something out there. 12 years later. So now that we've got the engine all cleaned up and ready to go, um, this air tank right here that would usually be mounted down here on the side of the frame is right in our way. The reason it's up here is the original owner Wayne had a blower for the concrete stuff or whatever they use that mounted under here. Well now that that's not there anymore, we can move the tank back here to the side of the frame where it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna get all these air lines undone and move it down there and they hopefully Everything should be the right length and fit right up to it, so we're going to find out here in just a moment. So as you guys see, we've got the, the air tank moved under the frame, bolted up where it's supposed to be. We've got it repainted down there. Now it looks way sleeker down there. We're pulling the stack mount off. 
Um, we're gonna unbolt the fuel tank strap, the rear fuel tank trap on the driver's, driver's passenger side and get the whole mount out from behind there. Um, then we're actually gonna take the whole headache rack and the stacks and all that good stuff and put them right here on this truck from the International. Um, so I did some price checking. That stuff's really expensive. And uh, when you get this truck on the road and get it making me some little bit of cash here and there so we can make some more videos. So we've got all the airbags installed on the rear of the truck. We've got all of our airlines hooked back up. I've got it, well, I'm gonna modify our little uh, air, air ride adjuster valve dealio here a little bit to make it ride a little bit lower normally, so we'll see. But everything's greased up, airbags are installed, new shocks are installed. Our torque bars have not arrived yet. They'll be here like Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, so tomorrow or Thursday, maybe Friday. <sighs> and then, I like the new shocks, there's Monroe Magnums. We like stuff with Magnums. And we got the headache rack, and I decided to go ahead and use the stacks off the International, because if we're gonna go all out and do show truck and strip it down, bare frame and all that good stuff, we might as well start fresh with all new stuff again, so. I'm out of breath. We just got that thing off the back of the cab over and everybody's out of breath. That thing's heavy as crap. So we did remove the old stack mount. Obviously you guys see that. I know there's a lot of people are like, oh, you can't run stacks mounted to the headache rack, but I've seen lots of trucks with a mounted to the headache rack. I don't see why it's gonna be such a problem. These things are literally meant to hold five, 600 pounds worth of chain on them. So why can't they hold, you know, hundred pounds worth of stacks? I don't see the issue there. So internationally, we robbed some more parts off you, baby. Sorry. Well guys, there she is. We've got the headache rack mounted on the Freightliner with the flat top stacks. I think it turned out good. We measured it. They're literally, literally, sorry, one inch lower than our door going out. So with the airbags deflated. So we're gonna have to drive this thing out with no air in the bag. It's gonna be really freaking close. It's all mounted to the frame how it's supposed to be. I remember a while back, if you guys were here with the International, there was a big argument in the comments about me drilling these holes. So they're mounted on top how it's supposed to be. This right here, the support right here, we put on top because it won't go on the bottom because of the air tank. So everything is mounted up how it's supposed to be. I'm gonna run to the Chrome Shop, 75 Chrome Shop tomorrow and grab a one of those, um, I don't know what you call it, like a Y to go in between the stacks to go over there to the turbo so we can get that hooked up and then some mud flap hangers for the rear. The ones that were on the International, I broke, tightened the bolt up too much and stripped it out, so it tore up. So tomorrow, we'll be headed to the Chrome Shop. So that's a wrap for today's upload. Make sure you smash the like button, drop a comment down below, and let me know what you guys think about the headache rack. It's staying on there. And uh, we want to replace the bags like you guys recommended, so. There it is. Our tanks hopefully will get, be getting polished tomorrow and our new tires will be here tomorrow too. So lots of new parts coming in tomorrow. We'll be getting bolted up to this thing. I did, we did break a line here. So maybe you guys can help us figure it out. We've been trying to figure it out. So this line runs from, let's see, right here. Comes out of the cylinder, which is the line that helps to open the cab and runs up. And I don't know where it goes. It broke off. We can't find out where it came from, where it broke off from. Do not have a freaking clue. It was caught up behind the shift mechanism there. And I don't know. We don't know. We're just at a complete loss for words. So if you guys have a diagram of why this one's even here, I think it may have something to do with like a cab lock, like an automatic lock. But this truck doesn't have automatic locks for the cab mounts or anything like that. They're manual. So I don't know. I'm just mind, mind boggled. We still haven't figured it out. If we can't figure it out, we're probably going to block it off. So maybe you guys can let us know. We appreciate it. Catch you guys later. Peace.